My final example is a problem that I consider to be a little bit more advanced than some of the examples I've shown. But I think this is something that if you really understand, it's going to give you a background to be able to do almost any probability question I can ask, including ones that are much easier. Uh, so here's my information. If in a given baseball season, Joey Votto has a 300 average, which is actually a little lower than he normally hits, but works nicely for making the numbers work out in this problem. Uh, if he has a 300 average, and I want to find the probability that he gets exactly one hit in three at-bats. A 300 average means he gets a hit 30% of the time. Um, if I want to find the probability of getting exactly one hit in three at-bats, once again I can break this down into pieces. Um, but you have to be careful here about how you do this. Really there are three things that can happen. He could get a hit in the first at-bat and then he could get out and then he could get out. He could get out in the first at-bat, and he could get a hit in the second at-bat, and he could get out in the third at-bat. Or he could make an out in the first two at-bats, and he could get a hit in the last at-bat. Um, notice that there are three different things that can happen here. It's this, or this, or this. Remember that or problems mean that you're going to be adding those totals together, all right? Now within each of these, I want to find the probability of, of a hit and an out and an out. Ands suggest I'm going to multiply. So let me take a shot at going through this. The probability in his first at bat that he makes a hit is 0.3, and that the next at bat he makes an out well, that's going to be a 70% chance. That's the complement of the event, the opposite. And that he makes an out in the following at bat. Okay? Uh, 0.3 times 0.7 times 0.7 equals 0.147. Right? So that's what I have for the first part. The probability of making an out followed by a hit, followed by an out, well, really, it's the same thing. It's a 70% chance that he gets out, and a 30% chance that he gets a hit, and a 70% chance that he gets out. It's going to give me another 0.147. Finally, you'll notice I have the same thing here again. Uh, he gets out, 0.7. He gets out, 0.7. He gets a hit, 0.3. Also gives me 0.147. And in the end, it's the probability of, of 0.147 or 0.147 or 0.147. Ors suggest that I add up my probabilities. And those probabilities end up adding up to 0.441. Okay? Uh, if you want to convert that to a percent, there's a 44.1% chance that he's going to get a hit in exactly one out of his three at-bats. So uh, if you notice, there's a reasonably good chance that that would happen. Um, because his batting average is about 300, which is about a third of the time. So that's probably the most likely thing to happen. Uh, you could go back and do something similar to find out the probability that he gets two hits in three at-bats. Uh, that would be hit, hit, out, hit, out, hit, um, and then maybe uh, um, hit, hit, out, or out, out. I guess it would be out, hit, hit, whatever. Uh, you could look at three different ways that could be done, and you can go from there. Now, there is something called the binomial theorem that allows you to calculate uh, for cases that are a lot more difficult. Like maybe if you're going to have seven at-bats and you wanted the probability that uh, he was successful in five of those at-bats. Okay, that gets increasingly more difficult as the numbers get bigger. Um, so there is a formula that allows you to crank these out a little bit faster than having to write out every scenario. But the point is you can break these down into and or problems and they do work out even if it's not necessarily the quickest way to do the problem. So if you want to do that bonus assignment, you can look up the binomial theorem and that will give you another way to do these problems.